board. Mm -hmm. Pam, are you? Good. All right, we'll call to order the uh, Taxing Permit District Joint Review Board Committee and for Thursday, September 6th. Um, to take roll call, we have Chad Weininger from Brown County. Here. We have Bob Matthews from NWTC. Here. Kale Pulzinski from Green Bay Area Public Schools. Here. Um, Diane Allen Becker from the City of Green Bay. And at this point, um, Brent Winker is not um, in attendance. Um, Kale is replacing John Kasha. Um, that is roll call. Um, we will. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, we will take approval of the agenda. Uh, <coughs> any questions on the agenda? Approve the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. All right. Anyone want to second the agenda? All right. Hi. All in favor? Aye. Uh, All in favor of the agenda? Are you so? Thank you. Or you can. You can. You can. Okay. Um, we'll motion, pa motion passes. Um, but we're going to do approval of the minutes from the June 28th, 2018 meeting. Oh, we mm -hmm. have a copy. So uh, we can put it on the back. Uh, you, you just do it. might have been the party script. <laughs> you just do motions. Um, it looks yeah. like it was missed from the packet. No, it wasn't in the packet. So we can push that. So we can hold it to the next meeting. Okay, moving on to regular business. Number one, adoption of the territory amendment to the project plan for tax incremental district 12 in the um, I-43 Industrial Park, which proposes the addition of 926 Erie Road, which is tax parcel 21-171. All right, so uh, included in your packet was a map of tax income and financing district number 12. Um, this map on the board shows the uh, current uh, existing boundaries of the district. As you can see, there's a little tooth in there up across Marlene Lane at the southwest corner of uh, Mason Street and Erie Road. Um, what we worked on uh, this past year, or actually the last year, was um, development agreement with Nature's Way uh, to construct a new health food manufacturing facility out there. Uh, they purchased roughly 30 acres from the city, um, which is this corner. Um, it actually was four parcels, two larger parcels and then two smaller old farmsteads. Um, with that, the farmstead here at the bottom right, the one right at the corner, uh, was not included in the original tax increment district. Um, the developer is requesting that that be added in to the district so that they can combine the parcel all into one. Right now they can't. Um, and just based on the way their structure is built, they are right up to the property line. So in order to meet building requirements, zoning requirements, they need to all be on one parcel. And so we would recommend that this uh, one parcel be added to to 12. Um, it would go in right now at a base value of about 170000 Dollars. Um, that is what would be added to that. Um, who owns that parcel? Who owns the parcel? Yeah. The city. They do now. And, but the city. The city. It was why, originally. Why was it yep. There originally. So originally, it was in private hands okay. when it went into the TID. Okay. The city um, purchased it okay. in 2017 okay. and then sold it to the developer as part of the development agreement. But one one of 17. Um, Nature's Way closed on it in 2017, so starting on it, it's going in with the value net. <coughs> okay. I make motion to approve the amendment to the kid 12 for the additional parcel. Any other discussion? A second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes? I said the first was by Bob Matthews and the second one was by Kale. Yep. For two for two. All right. We wait for Chad. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on to the second item the dissolution of tax increment district 17, TID 17, the 900 block North Broadway. 
Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, well, no. It's the west side, it's okay. So there's a train, right? No, there was one. <laughs> <laughs> I was just having another meeting and I was trying to get out of there. Thank uh, you. So this is Tax Increment uh, District number 17. Uh, it's a smaller uh, district, probably one of the smallest. It was created uh, for a project, a redevelopment project um, on the 900 block of North Broadway. Um, that project has since been completed and is finalized. Um, with that, uh, we do not anticipate any additional development up in this area. Um, we do note that in the developer's agreement, the uh, developer has not uh, basically fulfilled the obligations in the developer agreement. Um, and so we will be looking at recouping uh, basically based on the guarantee of what they owe us. Um, that can be done whether the tax district exists or not because we still have the agreement with them and, and uh, the guarantee that will go through with that. Uh, but with that, there's going to be no additional development in this area. Um, keeping it open, um, could keep it open, but I think Dan and I looked at it would still take us at least 10 years, 12 years to recoup back what we needed to do and then we felt it really wasn't worth keeping it open um, because, again, there's no other additional projects. I mean, it is what it is. Um, and that we would recommend that uh, we dissolve this TIF district and have it go back on the tax rolls. What is, this, what is the current position on that? Is it surplus or is it deficit? No, I didn't bring that with me. Um, let me pull up. Excuse me, this yeah. we started. I said yeah, I didn't write the yeah. it. Is, um, it, it does have an increment value. Um, it, it did, <coughs> um, at the end of 2017, it did pull, it does have a positive increment of $267,300. So it did create, we just we were expecting a higher increment. It does have positive. Correct. So the it has positive increment. The fund balance right now, we're okay. short about $64,000. And this was as of the end of 17. 17. So this year, uh, because this won't be dissolved until next year, um, there will be some additional revenues. And as you see, I mean, it will, cash flow, I mean, eventually the increment as is will put it back above the positive. Um, I think we're at a point right now, though, to look at... Um, I would assume that when you go back and get your, you recoup your investment, you'll be north of it correct. as well. So and that, that is that the something that you can do before, before the end of this year? Yeah, well, before we close it, and it would be a closure in actually 2019. It's just starting the process now so that yeah. we can, like right. we did... You'll, you're, you don't anticipate any fights or challenges in terms of the developer? Or um, you or potentially. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to discuss legal right. strategy that's too fine. much no, that's um, here, right. but um, the project overall has been a challenge, um, and so there may be some challenges in, in moving forward with that. Okay. Um, but that's the rest of the city is willing to take? I think in terms of the, the scheme of the amount, I mean, it's 64000 right. I mean, it's enough, but in the scheme of our budget, right. it's not no, worth right. in terms of, you know, keeping this piece open. Okay. Any other discussion on number two? Are there, I mean, are there other TIDs that we're looking to dissolve as well? Yes, so we had talked about, um, we talked about initially at our annual meeting, um, we had put on um, the possibility and actually had council uh, draft resolutions to mm -hmm. designate the RDA to be the authority um, to do what we're doing here today, mm -hmm. um, but to also potentially close um, number seven, Lombardi Ashland, mm -hmm. number nine, University Heights, I'm sorry, yeah, seven, eight, and nine. Um, Lombardi Ashland, Burger Moore, and University Heights. These were our 17 numbers. Um, the, we wanted to start the process of closure. Mm -hmm. Broaden the F, sorry. Yeah. As you can see. Yeah. So yeah. these three Lombardi Ashland, that is where the Tundra Lodge is. As of this year, that fund balance is back up positive mm -hmm. again. Um, and so we wanted to wait to make sure we got that fund balance for sure above positive mm -hmm. before a closure. Um, and then in terms of Burger Morrow and University Heights, those are pretty much would be intertwined. I, I wouldn't close one without closing the other in terms of the, the balance there. 
in order to try and not impact anything on the levy, we basically use fund balance Burger Morrow to cover the loss from University Heights. Um, we wanted to have at least go through the end of this year to see, what is there any one kind of last chance with University Heights in terms of development um, mm -hmm. out there? It hasn't looked promising, but we felt in terms of the, the closure date, um, that we wanted to start the process, but we still need to crunch a few more numbers before we officially start that closure. So, do you think that will happen, or is that? I, I think for for number seven, I mean, there's no imminent projects that I think that right. one we probably for sure will right. get closing. Um, I think we just have to talk internally or development team a few more items in terms of potential development out at University Heights. I think we, and as we talked about with like TID 12, mm -hmm. potentially closing that one down early right. and looking at expansion. That was my next question. Correct. So we were just getting the numbers through for TID 12 in terms of what expenditures are mm -hmm. out there. Um, if you've been out there, you've seen uh, the new stretch of Erie Road mm -hmm. um, actually out by um, Nature's Way. <coughs> so this stretch has all been replaced and done, and the sewer is going in from here all the way back <coughs> up to basically the school district mm -hmm. school district property um, up there. Um, that was done all in at about a cost of $2 million. Mm -hmm. um, we're about a third of the way done with the whole project. Um, we ran into some wetlands here, so it's going into next year to finish expanding. So we're all in probably about $6.5 million for that project. And as I said, that fund balance in there right now is just under, I think, $5 million. Um, so again, getting that increment a year, we should be able to cash pay that in cash yep. um, and still be able to target an early close <coughs> date for that. Okay. Um, right. And I, that goes back to then, once that is completed, mm -hmm. it basically opens up all that area east Correct. to be ready for development. And we've had more interest right. in being east of I-43 than we have at University Heights. Right. If something would pop up this year, I think maybe we'll come back to University Heights and see about keeping it open, but I just I don't anticipate mm -hmm. that happening. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I think the conversation has been let's put, let's put University Heights to bed, and I, if, if you come back with a new tit, I, I perfectly understand Look, that. But we've tried, and yeah. the economy is probably about as good as it's mm -hmm. going to be yep. in terms of employment and growth and yep. job, I mean, those types of things. And if it's not hitting a kind of peak economy, I don't know when. Right. It I'm is sorry. Going to hit. I, I meant industrial park. I'm sorry. Yeah. I meant mm -hmm. spoke industrial park. Correct. So okay. And then the, these tips that you're talking about closing down, are, are these the same ones that were brought to us last time we met? The exact same ones, or are we missing any? Uh, nope, I think these are the exact same ones. We talked about... I thought there was one that was close to Green Bay packaging that was gonna, you were talking about shutting down. That already is closed. That is we closed at that this year. So this year, the actions we took last year, we closed six, which was Navarino down here. Yes. Okay. We closed 11 Old Main, and we closed 15 Old North. Okay. Edges okay. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks yep. for yep. So yep. those are, yep. those are now closed. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Yep. And then we talked about, yeah, seven, eight, and nine. Yep. Um, and then the other one we didn't bring here was we also have resolution to create a new one for the shipyard. Right. Um, but we feel we're going to do that one in 1-1 one, one of 19 okay. instead of this year. Well, just out of curiosity, uh, who's okay. the military tip going? Currently, at the end of 17, it had a negative fund balance of 583. Um, that one is going to stay negative um, because it has more project costs, mostly because of the infrastructure. So, okay, so nothing's really changed then. At this point, it's at least going in the right direction for fund balance, but it's got a ways to crawl up. Yeah, because last year was 717. Yeah, and all. yeah. yeah. No, that, that, that's fine. I just, I was just curious. So, thanks. Okay. Any other discussion on number two? Take a motion. Motion to dissolve. I'll second. Now we had a first by Chad and a second by Bob. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. That passes. Moving on to number three, the creation of rehabilitation and cons conservation tax increment district number 20 to 20, Whitney Park and adoption of the project plan. So I just handed out a project plan um, to you that I just been updated, took care of some grammatical spelling 
other things, just a dated version. Um, no, no content changes mm -hmm. involved. I just wanted to have a fresh copy. Um, but that, uh, this is what we talked about um, at our annual meeting. We talked about potentially creating a tax increment district around uh, the Whitney Park area um, based on some development projects that we've been talking with through the Redevelopment Authority and the city uh, over this past year. Um, there's three projects. One is the redevelopment of the Whitney School property, uh, rehabbing the uh, school into 21 market rate apartments, building a dozen townhomes um, on the outside. Uh, Main 901, uh, 20 market rate apartments uh, right at the tip of Van Buren Main Street. Um, and then Whitney Park townhomes, uh, an extension or another phase of, of townhomes along Van Buren Street, uh, taking the corner of Van Buren and Cherry, uh, starting with four townhomes, but uh, developer looking to work uh, its way north up the block. So those three projects um, were discussed, contemplated, and had development agreements um, passed by RDA and council. Um, those developers have asked the city to pursue, and the GRB to pursue creating a tax increment district uh, to allow for those to happen. Um, I talked a little bit last time uh, about just some projections based on, on those three projects and the pro forma about um, <coughs> how those would move forward. Uh, all three of those projects are, are pay-go TIF incentives, so it's, the incentive is really dependent on them creating the increment. Um, you know, with that, um, we feel these are good projects that will create uh, some decent increment in the, uh, that district. Um, they're going to bring some much needed diversity and housing options um, to the city, um, you know, just outside of the downtown core, providing some housing for a lot of downtown workers potentially, um, but maybe at a little different price point What's that's lower. Lower, lower price. So the townhomes, um, not quite as low as the neighbor works townhomes sold for about 150, 160. Um, the developers here were looking at these townhomes from like low 200s, like 210, um, up to potentially 225, 230. Um, I think we estimated them in at about 220. I know for the Whitney Park townhomes, I think they already had two or three pre-sales at like 220. Um, then, yeah, Kevin, mm -hmm. uh, the, um, the, I think Garrett had built these, um, these other townhome style. Correct. What, what did those sell for? So those initially started selling for about 145 for the interior to like 150 for the exterior. Um, some recent sales on them have been up to like 160, 175. Okay, so, so they've appreciated yeah. in value. Um, they are included in this district. Um, they're newer, but based on the trends, we anticipate them to appreciate. So um, they're not going to get torn down anytime soon. So we do anticipate. I didn't build into this model, but there could be some additional increment from those as those resell. I'm sure. I'm sure. That makes sense. So then, <coughs> the the quality or the, is it about the same? level of quality for appraisal value or is it are they going to be lesser or greater so the developer knows that these will be appraised or they will be assessed sure at the sale price so long as it's a market sale at the sale price and uh okay yep. okay and so we've worked with the assessor and <coughs> the developer on what they anticipate selling um again the uh, i know uh, mr bader has two or three pre-sales on his. Um, I know Whitney has talked about some pre-sales. They haven't publicly announced anything in terms of where they've sold those. Um, but we kind of estimated it. We did talk to the assessor and also some other real estate folks to kind of like, all right, does this make sense? Um, and, and we feel that, that 200, 210 uh, does fit in, in that area. They will be probably, I would say, in terms of like grades and finishes, a step above the existing townhomes that Mr. Bader did. Then, just out of curiosity, if, if you don't mind me just asking a few more questions, on, on the on the site here, that square, are you are you going to be like demoing any of that property then? Um, which square? The parking lot? Yeah. So just the garage will get taken down. The right. church and the house um, on the southwest corner, those both remain. Those are not part of the property. Like the house is in? Nope. Okay. Nope. So the house and, and the church will stay. And then you're going to do something across the street too, right? Yep. That's where the uh, other townhomes will go. Okay. And those yeah. will be all. Yeah. There's a house right here. Um, it's like 
for sale, yeah. second yeah. rate. Right. Okay. Yeah. But do you have control of those houses, or do you have to like finish them? We do. So we, the RDA owns the properties. Let me show right here. Oh, so that's RDA owns this. RDA owns this. We're actually going to close on it with the developer okay. tomorrow, and then the developer has control over these homes here. Um, still working to get these here, but at least there's enough to start for four townhomes here. And what happens with the church? The church here, the church stays. The church stays. The house next to it stays. Uh, they're included in this pin, though. Correct. They're in the territory. Correct. And then, is the is the thought to refurbish the Whitney School, or is that raised? And what's the thought? Is there is there any type to the school? Yeah. It'll be rehabbed. So rehabbed. they are actually getting um, historic tax credits yeah. for it. Okay. So there'll be um, the what was the defining feature? The hallways are historic. With the marble and slab and everything like that, oh. there. Again, I say the best bubblers I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, those are the ridiculous <laughs> quality. So yes. <laughs> so it will be a rehab. Um, the only thing I'm going to take a note is that old garage on the site, and those are where the townhomes will be. Okay. Any other questions on item number three? And the and the agreements are locked and loaded, or all of them have binding development agreements. Again, they're all <coughs> contingent upon. Passage. The city creating a tax increment district for that area. So, so is there infrastructure involved from the city's perspective, or is that so? Right now, yeah. So the infrastructure that was proposed in the budget, um, I think, we kind of talked about this maybe about two years ago with like University Avenue, or even last year with East Town Mall. There are things that we could look at as that tax increment district accumulates money that we could spend so money on. Enhancing the park, enhancing, um, we've talked about perhaps like decorative lighting in that area or yeah. signage to kind of brand the district. But you don't have. But none of that needs to be done up and front. It's not built, it is built in or it's not built in to your financials? So it is, there are no expenditures in this pro forma. This has us not spending right. any of that that's, money that's yet. That's what I'm asking. Correct. Yep. Okay. There's a budget so there's no for assumption. it. There's nothing that you have to do ahead of, except for getting the established. Correct. All of the projects will require private infrastructure right. improvements, right. but that's all part of the cost. Right. And Correct. built into the payroll. Correct. Correct. So, but just to be clear, so there's no intent on the city's behalf, because I think this is kind of, this is kind of what got some of the other kids and Dr. Merrill, so I believe is they just beautified and then they just, and nothing materialized and you can't just beautify and all things calm. And I, I know you guys get that, but right. So that that's not your intent, right? So if things right. come, then we'll beautify. Beautify, yes. but yes. it's only yeah. after. Okay, correct. And well, then if you can fund it with an tip, correct. Right. And this is an eighty percent pay go. So the for the um, Whitney School deal, it's an eighty percent. All of them are an eighty percent, with the exception of the nine hundred one main is a hundred percent for the first five years to take care of some additional environmental. Um, but with that, the nine hundred one. I what is nine hundred one? That's um, a bus station. It's so here's somewhere in time antiques, yeah. uh, Simonet's bar, uh, the old Greyhound station right here. It's that lot right in front of somewhere in time antiques. What, what's, what's wrong? With it? What's wrong with it? It's yeah. old gas station. Oh, it's area. Has been just on this right here? Correct. That yep. area? So yep. it, that's 100%. So that needs to be excavated. And that's going to be town homes too. This area is going to be That's the homes. apartments. Apartments. Yep. 20 apartments. Okay. What, I, I apologize. What's the market rate on the apartments? Um, just <coughs> a touch under Metro. I could go back and look at the numbers, but I wanted to say for I say one or two bedrooms, roughly. Yeah. Um, I want to say like two bedrooms. Well, like how about this? Let, let me yeah. ask this question. Yeah. Now. Like, is this going to like cannibalize what they're doing over on the title town side? Or is it competing in that same market, or is it a little different, or is there enough capacity? Yes and yes. So, okay. there right now, <coughs> as far as um, apartments go, like we are at functionally like zero vacancy. Really? Yes. And we've been, yes. <laughs> um, they're all, and that's both for market rate and affordable housing. Um, yeah, I mean, functionally, we're at zero. I mean, we're at maybe like one or two percent, but like naturally, it should be like five to eight percent. And we're at, yeah, one to two. Um, but they have also done, kind of through their market numbers, 
trying to differentiate themselves. They know they're not going to be at like City Deck Landing or Metro right. levels, uh, but they also, I mean, kind of against each other, the Whitney Apartments and the now one main apartments know that there's different price points or clientele yeah. for that. So, so can I, <coughs> this is it's still kind of been around and a little bit off, but I know, I know there's a lot of like single family houses that are being rented out. Are, is that market solid around here too? Or is that softening now? Um, as far as like taking a home and yeah, because it seems like there's still a lot of like rental units that are single homes in, in that area. Yeah, there there are. Um, we're trying to work on improving the quality of those rentals. Oh, I mean, no, no, and I, I didn't mean I didn't mean I didn't mean <laughs> the market. Way, but is it sure? Is it are they still pretty <laughs> solid or is that weakening at all? Um, still pretty solid. I mean, the numbers. I gotta go pull back some other stuff, but half of all new households that are being created, half of them are renters. So, I mean, in terms of like future market, I mean, <coughs> half people are still going to rent. Oh, perfect, thanks. Yep. So what's the demographic that you, they're, they're targeting? Is this like 20s and 30s, professional, or, I mean, I'm just yeah. trying to, I mean. I, yep. I think some of the things they've talked about, I mean, are <coughs> professionals, younger professionals who work downtown, um, you know, maybe even um, some of the ones they've talked about are like teachers or people in, um, you know, kind of government work, right. um, you know, kind of maybe just not executive level, but, you know, a, a run or two in terms of salary wise, professionals. right? Um, professionals, but they've also, I mean, they've also <coughs> had interest from uh, empty nesters. Right who are just like, they want to be downtown, maybe can't afford a, a metro, but still want to be closer and not have to deal with maintenance and all those other types of things. So um, you kind of get the mix. There's not a lot of, they're not really building for families. I mean, most of these things are one and two bedrooms. With the exception of townhomes, I mean, do have um, three bedrooms with possibly converting the basement. Um, so those have seen some families, but the apartments are primarily empty nesters, professionals, kind of these ends of the spectrum. Okay, we have, a, we have a first by Bob Matthews and we have a second by Chad. All in favor? Aye. That passes. All right, moving on to number four, the creation of Light Illumination Tax Increment District 21, TID 21, Green Bay Packaging and Adoption of the Project Plan. All right, uh, also at our annual meeting, we talked about potential mm -hmm. for tax increment district uh, around Green Bay Packaging property uh, on North Quincy Street, just so divide 43. Um, pretty much no secret that they're embarking on construction of a new $500, $500 million dollar uh, mill facility. Um, also making some improvements uh, to their box plant, which is at the corner of um, Quincy and, and Radisson. Um, and they are on a very fast track to move forward with that. Uh, as I said, I mean, it's a pretty substantial investment uh, for the city. Um, and basically between partnership with the city, the county, the state, um, are looking to create this uh, tax increment district to help finance uh, costs of the project. Um, you're dealing with a 50, 60 year old paper mill. And when you talk about blight elimination, I mean, one of the things here is um, you know, functional obsolescence of some of these things, um, you know, health and safety measures in terms of the mill are just, you know, outdated to current codes. Um, you know, additionally, there's environmental issues that need to be dealt with. Um, you know, when this thing was built, environmental regs were a little bit different than they are now. Um, with that, uh, I think they've also been pretty forward about, you know, some of the environmental improvements they'll be doing in terms of uh, converting from coal to natural gas and actually doing a zero water waste facility um, which is pretty unique in terms of the paper making industry. Um, but with that, uh, we're proposing a tax increment district that really uh, is and of uh, Green Bay packaging parcels themselves. Um, these involve um, you know, basically the, the mill facility on Quincy Street towards the river um, and then the rest of the parcels that they own. Um, really most of this work is going to be taking place um, <coughs> on that facility. Um, or on their own parcels. And with that, um, we see 
we proposed a, a PAYGO in this area. Um, it's a 90% PAYGO, uh, but with that, I mean, we were talking about some substantial dollars in terms of we anticipate right now. Um, it's about $18 million assessed. Um, we've been working with the state um, DOR because they're going through the industrial assessment, but they figure we're probably going to end up around $64, $65 million. Um, Again, that does not include any personal property. Right. Um, for both this and that one, I mean, I, I think the finance director, Ellen Becker, and I generally don't include mm -hmm. personal property just because there's too much variation. And we just saw something yesterday about the way now it's being distributed, and, and, and just there's too much variability in it. So if it ends up coming in, great, but we're not counting on any of that. Um, so with that, um, you know, we anticipate. Um, this, you know, producing some pretty good income for the, the TIT itself. Um, if there's some things, uh, we have a project Webster Avenue reconstruction going on. Uh, we really don't anticipate any public infrastructure pieces. Those are, again, are all included in here. In the pay go? Correct, and in terms of, I think, the, the county was helping out with some things. I think they're moving <laughs> a ton of dirt <laughs> from, okay. the, because you're taking a big hole um, and making another mountain. Um, but in, in terms of the infrastructure, um, we're actually looking at potentially closing some public streets in there, so that will actually become private responsibility okay. um, in terms of maintenance in the future. But again, we have a, a you know a smaller fund, uh, but fund available in case there are things that come up um, in terms of maybe like some traffic improvements or things like that along Webster. So is that like the one that the ten percent is going to be on? Right. So. Um, so on the left street, you'd use some traffic signals or something? Or I mean, there, there's a lot of it already budgeted for in our Webster reconstruction project. This looks at like, okay, the mill's operating for you know, 10, 15 years. <coughs> Are there adjustments that need to be made? Like, okay, now we need to add another turn lane or based on the truck traffic, you know, those things like that. Can we make some tweaks to okay. Webster or a different route? So you hold enough back to take care of Correct. potentials? Okay. Correct. Yeah, I think just the cushion I mean, to, to yeah. deal with things up I in that area. Think that's more than Yeah, this one was difficult. Uh, yeah, put that on. I want to put more on this one. The second on this one? Second. So we have a first by Bob and a second by Brent. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And that passes. Um, so then, just next up in terms of. Um, process we will be having uh, our public hearing on this uh, the RDA will be holding that public hearing Monday at 4 p.m. Uh, in this room um, so we sent out again we noticed that taxing jurisdictions um, we sent a notice to all the property owners uh, for that hearing uh, and then, then after that hearing um, based on those that hearing recommendation from RDA uh, those resolutions will be drafted go to our council, um, and then we'll look at a date probably to meet the end of this month to or early October um, to approve those resolutions to make it final. Good. Any other questions? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. <laughs> we have a motion by Brent and second by Chad. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's approved. <laughs> I did make it in time, but I ran, and I'm like, that's why I'm coughing, I'm like, I'm out of shape. <laughs> did you run over here? But, yeah. no, I ran to my car, but I parked, oh, you parked, I parked the farthest away, and you parked, like, I never thought I should. Up at the shelter almost, yeah, right? I do. I know, I see your little car. Yeah, I know, we're pretty up. I need to exercise. Wow.